Hello, and welcome to episode 4 of Sarastro's Blood Rage painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Sea Serpent from Simon's Blood Rage. The Sea Serpent is an extremely dynamic figure, and with a limited colour palette and no accessories to worry about, is reasonably straightforward to paint. Let's take a look at the painting stages. After providing a Xenothor Prime as detailed in episode 1, I've noticed a few gaps on the sculpt which I've chosen to fill using Vallejo's matte varnish. We can then apply the base colours, allowing the Xenothol highlights to show through where necessary, and I'll be doing some rough wet blending for the crashing waves. I'll then be working section by section, adding highlights and shade to push the contrast and create interest. To finish the serpent off, I've chosen to add some fun saliva effects with some glue. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin, using a roughly equal mix of wag flesh and Vallejo's dark sea blue. I'm thinning this with a few drops of water, along with some optional glaze medium. I'm aiming for a consistency that will allow some of the zenithal highlights to show through. Once dry, I'm quite happy with the variation in levels for the main body of the serpent, but I've chosen to provide a second layer to the tendrils, which are currently looking a little too blotchy and uneven. Next I'm going to paint the tongue and mouth, using a roughly equal mix of Bugman's Glow and an Agaroth Knight. For the smaller tendrils on the face and neck, I'm using Bugman's Glow. Where the tendril merges into the skin of the face, we can mix an intermediate tone by adding some of the green to create a more organic gradation. For the teeth, I'm going to mix a brownish grey tone by adding some Steel Legion Drab to some Mechanicus Standard Grey. Finally, for the crashing waves, I'm going to loosely blend some dark sea blue black, and some white. I'm first applying some dark sea blue and black to the lower and mid section of the waves. I'm now applying the white to form some foamy crests at the top. I'm blending some of the white with the darker tones below, but still making sure that I end up with pure white for the very tops of the waves. I'm now working my way around the back in the same way. 
The main things I wanted to achieve here was to avoid having the sea look too blue, and I want maximum contrast between the main dark body of water and the white foamy peaks. Here I'm reapplying some pure white to the tips of the waves. With the base colours complete, we're now ready to add some highlights and shade. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, and we'll be lightening the original dark sea blue and warg flesh base tone with the addition of varying amounts of Kisla flesh, white, and a little yellow. The precise colours aren't that important, the main thing is that I wanted to include some orange and yellows to maintain some warmth in the highlights, in contrast with the cooler tones of the ocean. Adding just white to the green would reduce the levels of yellow, resulting in a cooler skin tone. I'm going to first split the base tone into two separate wells, so I can return to the original colour if needed. I'm now lightening the tone with a little white, and I'm now adding some of the flesh tone. This is currently darker than the paler areas on the body, so I'm only using this to begin laying down the highlights for the darker sections, namely the tendrils on the head. I'm now lightening the tone further in several stages, with the addition of some more white, Kisler flesh, and some yellow. As always, I'm using an older brush to mix the colours. This is now light enough to begin working our way down the face and body. As usual, I'm building the tone up in reasonably thin layers.
as I often like to do, you'll see me using a damp brush to extend or feather these highlights out. You can see I'm pushing these highlights quite far. I'm now adding my smallest and brightest highlights. Although I'm happy with the levels of brightness, I've decided I want a little more tonal variation, so I'm now introducing some more of the warmer skin tones into the face area in particular. With the highlights complete, I'm now going to push the contrast and tonal range a little further with some Celia green shade. I'm thinning this with a few drops of Lamian medium and applying the shade selectively to the areas I wish to darken. This can also be feathered out with a damp brush. An additional layer or two can be added to push the depth further.
With the skin complete, I'm now going to work on the mouth, and I'm starting by shading the gums and inside of the mouth with some Druki Eye Violet. I'm now going to paint the back of the mouth with a mix of Nagaroth Night and Black to ensure it's as dark as possible. We can now begin highlighting the tongue and the gums with the original Buckman's Glow and Nagaroth Night base tone. I'm now going to lighten this with the addition of some white and some pink horror in a couple of stages. I've chosen to push the intensity of the saturation by using some pure pink horror. This is to help make the mouth more of a focal point. And I'm now mixing white with the pink horror to create some small specular highlights, creating the impression of a wet and shiny finish. For the small tendrils on the face, I'm going to begin the highlights with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm now using pure Cadian Flesh Tone. This can be lightened further with a little white and a hint of pink horror. Finally, I'm going to highlight the teeth by adding increasing quantities of white to the original brown-grey base tone. For the brightest highlights, I'm mixing a little Uriel Yellow into some white. To finish the mouth off, I've chosen to add a few final extreme highlights of pink horror and white to the gums.
We can now turn our attention to the water, and I'm going to begin by reapplying some of the base colours to neaten up areas where the miniature has been handled. I'm also reapplying some white to the areas of foam. I'm now going to once again apply some thinned Celia Green Shade. This can cover most of the waves with a focus on the dark to mid tones. With that done, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the eyes by mixing some dark sea blue into some white. And I'm now adding a small touch of pure white. Next I'm going to tidy the rim of the base with some black. And apart from applying some matte varnish for protection, as a final optional touch I'm going to use some UHU glue to create some drool. All we do here is use an old brush, modelling tool or just a toothpick, and stretch the glue between the teeth of the upper and lower jaw. And this completes the sea serpent. Thank you for watching, and especially if you have liked or commented on the video. Don't forget you can find full details of the brushes and paints used in the video description, where you'll also find links to my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts. Do please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon to ensure you don't miss any future videos. My very special thanks go out to the amazing patrons who are funding this series. If you'd like to help support my work, you can hit the Patreon link and gain access to a range of benefits, including exclusive PDF guides, behind scenes videos and paint conversion charts. Join me again soon, and as always, happy painting!